with two instances of historic flooding in just the past eight weeks and another nor'easter on the way tomorrow, it's becoming clear that big solutions are needed to respond to climate change and its effects on Massachusetts. We talked yesterday about ideas for Boston, but what about statewide efforts? Adam Riley reports. It's been four months since the Massachusetts Senate unanimously passed Senate Bill 2196, which would create a comprehensive state plan to respond to climate change. Now that bill is in the Massachusetts House awaiting further action. Senator Mark Pacheco, the bill's lead sponsor, says it's a familiar pattern. We've passed it five times here in the Senate. Without the House following suit, which means some big ideas for managing the effects of climate change still haven't become law. We can prevent the worst impacts of global climate change if we have a strategy as part of state law. It's a big problem that is here. It's not coming, you know, 100 years from now. The bill's ideas include a mandate that everything the state does regulatorily, from licenses to permits to grants, fit that new climate change plan, quote, to the maximum extent practicable. Also, a new state program to buy back flood-prone property, which Deanna Moran of the Conservation Law Foundation says is essential. Over the past few decades, over 400 homes in Massachusetts have been repeatedly damaged by flooding, and over 100 of those have received more in federal flood insurance payouts than their homes are even worth. Moran acknowledges that responding to climate change now won't be cheap, but she also says that as the damage increases, the price tag will too. Every dollar we spend on mitigation today will save us $6 down the road. Which brings us back to the Massachusetts House, where Representative Frank Smizek has taken two cracks at getting this legislation passed. Fresh off the latest round of coastal flooding, Smizek says he's optimistic about the bill's prospects. We see more interest in the, in the people who are in the leadership now, that they know this is an important thing to do. We have 32 people who've already signed on both sides and we're going to get a lot more. But that won't matter if House Speaker Bob DeLeo isn't on board. In a statement, DeLeo's office says only the proposed legislation is under review by the House Committee on Ways and Means. Make of that what you will. Adam Early joins me now. Hey, Adam. Hey, Jim. Isn't the state already working on some sort of, I don't know what it's called, master climate change strategy or something? You are correct. Governor Baker signed an executive order back in, I think, September 2016, uh-huh. ordering the creation of what uh, what he called an integrated strategy to approach climate change. The difference is that it doesn't include this buyback provision that the Senate wants to see put into law, and it also doesn't include that, I think, really crucial provision that everything that happens regulatorily from here on out jibe with the climate change strategy that gets created. By the way, that hasn't been issued yet. It'll be out, I think, by September of this year. What are people who would say this is a no-brainer? I'd probably be in that category, too. Mm -hmm. What are we missing here? I think one concern is the transfer, potential transfer of costs from the feds to the state. Deanna Moran from For CLA, these houses, for fixing these? Right, right. Deanna Moran talked about how, you know, one financial reason to do this is the federal government's already spending tons of money to rebuild properties on the water. But if you have the state buying those, then it's the state making mm-hmm. the financial sacrifice instead of the feds. Also, if you put into law that everything that happens from here on out has to jibe with this climate change uh, strategy that the state comes up with, you are presenting, I think, a zillion opportunities for litigation. litigation. Yeah, so that's the concern that they'd hold them to it. Adam, thanks so much. Good thanks, to see you.